Okay, this is the first Maimon that Rebbe said a year after he became Rebbe, at the first Yud Shabbat for Bering Tov Shunyad Aleph. Okay, so last week we just mamish, we didn't, let's start, we didn't so do the actual it. first day the Rebbe didn't say As soon as the previous Rebbe passed away, the Rebbe becomes Rebbe. The Rebbe didn't officially accept no, oh, oh. for a year. And then he said this Maimon. Okay, I have come to my God, my sister, the bride. We said, why does it say, why does it say, because it's in a few places. But in this place, it says, the son-in-law of, what, I forgot the rabbi's name. So they say, this is, uh, the Frit Geb is alluding to, to the Rebbe. <coughs> it doesn't say he came to the garden. It says, Lugungani. To my garden, which means Lugnuni, to my dwelling place, Lamakam Shay Ikri Bitchila. Where I was at the beginning of creation, before creation. The Ikri Shkina Betachtainim Haisa. Because the main Shkina, the primary level, this is all the quotes, like Ad Kan Lashay. This is so far what the Rafidi the Gabba writes. Okay, this paragraph is hard. I mean, it's very Kabbalistic. So we're going to um, move along. Okay, he said, "Will have in the eclosion ikr shchina to understand what is an ikr shchina means." Not only the shchina, it doesn't say the shchina was down here. Ikr shchina means the primary level of the shchina. He ne bir shchina mavai chakal morazokim. By the way, he said twice a year the rabbin the maimorim. Sometimes it could have been more, but twice a year the rabbin mentioned all the rabbeim in the maimorim, starting from the bal shemtiv, the magid. The seven rabbeim in the later years that Rebbe mentioned his father also in the Maimir. Rosh Hashanah, the Rebbe mentioned all the rabbeim in the Maimorim, and in um, Basilagan, Yud Shvat, the Rebbe mentioned all the rabbeim. So here, the Rebbe, the Rebbe, the Rebbe is going to bring down each Rebbe a few times. Umevayeh Hakam Arzog and Al Rebbe explains that Neku Shchina. Why is it called Shchina? What's the word Shchina mean? She Shechanes and Mislabeshes Meloshim VeShachanti Beseichem. When Hashem is called Shechina, it means because it's Shochem Betachtenim, it's a level of Alukus that comes into the world. Shoresh is his Galus Sof, which is the beginning of Revelation. Okay? Again, I'm going to read this quick and just Taich and Govaitim. Nini, Mashakal, Tivadesh is his Galus Sof. This, that is the beginning of Revelation, is called Shechina, is understood that there's a level of Shechina even higher than Atsilas. Even er even in the revelation of Alakus before the Tzimtzum, Shadesh is his galus or bearing tov shifnei at Tzimtzum, because the beginning of revelation is the level of Alakus higher than Tzimtzum, like the Mitzvah Rebbe writes. Ki adiv kav achut lagabi atzmis saying tov nikkum b'shem shchina, because the level of kav and chut, which is a line and a thread, compared to the higher level before it, is the level of shchina. Ki inyan shchina b'chol makim, because shchina in every place, any level that you speak about. Shechina is that level of alokuz that comes into the lower world. So it's before the symptom, after the symptom, in the ma'azilis. The gam is a shemalchus datzilis niku shechina. Even the malchus datzilis is called shechina because it goes into bria. That's all only the semach zedek explains. Your davka k'meishin natsis b'chinas atik leilam abria. The way it goes into the crown of bria. Avo b'yeis abatzilis, but the way malchus is an atzilis itself. Um yuchad to see more. Is united with the spheres of Atzilis, you can't use the word Shechina. Bottom line is, Shechina means the level of Alukos that goes into the next world. Now, in the chain of the worlds, let's stop, let's say this 101. In the chain of the world, the Ishtauchilis, right? The four worlds are called Ishtauchilis. Why is it called Ishtauchilis? It means a chain. What's a chain? Link into link into link into link. That women should know what a chain is. Now, in a link, yeah, there's two parts. When the link, a goes into link B. There's two parts of A. There's a level of A that goes into B. Yes, and there's a level of A that's not in B. Got anybody have a chain for demonstration? Okay. That's only the A. All the other ones. No, B and to C is the same thing. Correct, but there's A has A is connected. On yeah, A one. is A doesn't right. Okay. okay, but when A goes into B and B into C, there's two parts that we link. There's a level of the link that goes into the next level. That level is called Shechina. Because it goes into the next level, correct? But the way it is by itself, the top level is not called Shechina because it doesn't go into the lower level. Mikama um, came, it doesn't contradict 
what he said before that the kav is level of shechina, because shechina in Chazal is malchus dasilas, and even then when it becomes a crown of bria, when it goes into bria, but the way it is in the essence of Hashem, it's also the level of shechina. Okay, you know what? Skip the. Let's go to base. Oh, do me a favor. <laughs> 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 I tell you, let's take it, even if you don't, tough luck. <laughs> okay, base. Okay, so uh, pro, the bottom line is like this. When the Frieder Gabba writes in the Maimon, Iker Shechina Betachtoinim Haisa means the highest levels of godliness that go into the next level is called Shechina. That's all that I've been saying. It goes all the way up to Lifnei Atzimtzum and afterwards from before and after. Okay. He says, This, that the primary, this level of Shechina was down here. <coughs> it explains in the Medrash, what is Shechina B'Tachtainim? What do you mean Shechina in a low place? What low place are we referring to? In this world. That means, basically what he's going to explain. Before the Chet Eitzadas, that's what the Medrash says. Ika shechina b'tachtein ma'isa, and then Medrash continues through the chatei tzedas. The shechina left. Next sin, the shechina left more, left more, 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 more. Okay, but when it says ika shechina b'tachtein ma'isa, means before other Medrashim said it could have been a few hours, it could have been a few days, depending how you learn. The highest level of godliness was in the world, and he says kameshim avaya daidei chatei tzedas. And the Medri says through the Eitz Adas, through all them sinning, it, the Shechina left from the earth to the first heaven, and then through the various sins, it kept going up, 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 all the way to the seventh heaven. And therefore, when the Medri says, Basi Lagani, it came back, it means by Matan Teira, Basi Lagani Lagnuni, it came back to earth. Okay? Eitz Adas was the first sin that made the Shechina go from earth to heaven. Then when Cain killed Anish, uh, killed Hevel, and then Anish and all that, it kept going up, 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 up. Then the seven Tzadikim, as the Rebbe is going to bring down in a second, brought it back down. Meshe Rabbeinu, who was the seventh, brought it back down to earth. And therefore, Hashem says, Basi Lagani, I'm coming back to the garden where I was. I left. And now I came back. Is it still here? <clears throat> now? Yeah, maybe. And the primary leaving of the Shechina from the earth was Bechet Eitzadas, Davke, Davke, Eitzadas. And now let me explain this outside first. The, the Shechina left from earth to heaven, and then heaven, 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 right? It's understood that, not physically, from earth to heaven, is a bigger jump than from heaven to heaven, right? Because earth to heaven is a bigger jump than, okay. So it took a super great sin to make it leave earth, and then the other sins were not as bad, and therefore just went heaven to heaven. So to bring it back down from the first heaven to earth, it took a powerful person. Meishabeinu, who was the seventh, and the Rebbe Kolashvir Chavivin, he was able to bring the Shechina back down to earth. Because Meish Rabbeinu was greater than Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, and all the seven generations. Yeah. Okay, he says, Bechet Eitzadas, and Bechet Eitzadas, so you see, Bavagerim Lechatoim, the Bechet Eitzadas was the cause of the follow-up sins of Kayin and Anish, etc. Kmei Kino Bapu'u Lesachet. So it is also in the effect of the sin the leaving of the Shechina through sin, the primary leaving was the Rebbe just saying, the worst leaving was through the Eitzadas, because that was the worst sin. Just like the primary Shechina was down here before the Marishan sinned. The same thing in the leaving. The primary leaving is from earth to heaven. 
That's a bigger leaving than heaven to heven to heven. Mashin is talik me oritz the davka. Shazen na say de chate tzadas. That was the what the chate that. That's why it's such a terrible sin. Chate tzadas. Pasha made the shechina leave from the earth. Now it's interesting. Meishe Rabbeinu brought the shechina back down. Right, and therefore because the shechina was down here. There was no more impurity. Martin Tur took away all the impurities of the Chet Tzadas. Right? Chet Tzadas caused the Shechina to leave. So Martin Tur brought it back. So it undid the Chet, the Chet Tzadas, right? The problem is the ego, 40 days later, redid the Chet Tzadas. Okay. <laughs> all 40 days. So, so which is worse, the Chet Tzadas or, or the ego? Just as bad. Shaydeiz, one second. Shaydeiz and this talka shechina may also be that caused the shechina to leave from earth to heaven. V'zel gamkin tam. That's why the previous Rebbe the Maimer says like this: Through the chetei tzedas, the shechina left from earth to heaven. And then he says, and through the sins of Cain and Enish, Cain one to two, Enish two to three, he separates eight tzedas from the other sins. When he says it, um, the kain the anish cheshiv zeb b'fnei atzmei, kain and anish he puts together, in the other sins. But when he speaks about chetei tzedas, that he keeps separate. When he mentions the sins, v'ishe b'chatoim the kain vanish because in the avodas of kain and anish nistalka shchina merakia lerakia, the shchina only left from heaven to heaven, which is not as bad as earth to heaven. But the chetei tzedas was worse. Number one, it left from earth to heaven. And he says two things. Besides the fact that it left earth, but that's more relevant to us because we're on earth. We had it and now we don't. You know, once it's already going up, it's not so relevant because anyway we don't have it. So it goes a little bit further and further, you know. It's like you have a relative that you like sometimes. Next to you, you're happy. They move out of the city, it's a, it's a loss. But now they go from city to city. It's not, even though it's a little bit further, it's not as big of a loss as the first initial leaving. Okay, so that just sounds like this. Ike Shechina, meaning the highest level of, of course, which is the level of Shechina before the Tzimtzum, was down here on the earth, physical earth, before Eitadas. Eitadas, the terrible sin that it was, got the Shechina out of here. Okay? Did I ask you a question? What? Is the Shechina needed to, to, to keep the world alive, s- sustain the world? Do we need the Shechina to sustain the world? No. The world it's exists even if the Shechina is not here. But to have a revelation of godliness in the world, that's what Shechina is all about. What was the base of Mikdash? Was yeah. only Mikdash, the Shachanti Besechem. Yes, the Shechina. Now, is God all over the world? So, what was unique about the base of Mikdash or the, Shekh- the Mishkan? If Hashem's all over, yeah. If Akshlema Malachim Malachim asks the question, Hashem, after when he built the base of Mikdash, and Alukus came down into the base of Mikdash, so Shlema Malach says the pasuk Alei Shemayim Ushmei Shemayim Lo Yichal Kolucha. The heaven and the highest level that can't even handle you. says, and this house, uh, whatever, the base of Migdosh is, is going to be able to handle you. So the question is, if Hashem's all over, which He is, so what's unique about the Mishkan and the base of Migdosh? That we say it's the Shechina, the Shechanti right? So the answer is because Shechina, the base of Migdosh, was godliness was revealed. Yeah, Hashem's all over the world, but He's not revealed. In the base of Migdash, you so open God it. Ten constant miracles and even greater miracles. So what does that mean? When you see constant miracles, you see godliness. So Shechina basically is a concept of the revelation of godliness. Vasili Migdash and Shechanti Besaycham, that I should reveal myself. But of course Hashem's all over. Okay, Imam Shechba Maimer. Imam he continues in the mind like this. After the Shechina left up seven heavens, it says, Omdu Sayin Tzadikim. Veridu, it says, Shechina Lamat. So seven Tzadikim got up and brought the Shechina back down. Avram, Zach, Veridu, Sashechina, Merakia, Zayin, Levov. 
Avram brought the Shechina from seven to six, and then he's Mikatzer. He does Chulu in on the Filidik He doesn't go through each one of the Sadikim. And then he says, Akimesh Yeshu Ashvi. Tomesh was the seventh. The Chol Ashvi and Chavivin. And all seven are precious. Hedi Dolamata Baris brought the Shechina back down. Who were the seven Sadikim, by the way? Meshe Ben was the seventh generation from Avram. So Avram Yitzchak Yaakov, Levi, Kahas, Amram, Meshe. Right? This Meshe would have been the seventh Ben Achaben from Avram Avinu. So Meshe Rabbeinu was the seventh, brought the Shekhinah back down to earth. And he says, In other words, just like leaving, it took a big sin of Eitzadas to make it leave. So the same thing, bringing it down, was Dafka through Meshe Rabbeinu. Hari Iker Bechet, I mean, sorry, I skipped. Kokshem Shebin Yen Asila Kmomata Lamaila. Just like when the Shekhinah left the earth, it was Iker Bechet Etzadas, which was the source of all sins. So it was the worst of all sins the Shekhinah left. Kamei Kem Bin Yen Amshach Lamaila Lamata. The same thing, bringing the Shekhinah back down. Iker Bin Yen Amshach Lamata Ba'aretz Dafka. The ultimate level is that the Shekhinah shouldn't be in heaven one, it should come down to earth. Number one, it's relevant to us because then we have the Shekhinah. If it's on earth, we have it. He needs not only that, because that's the ultimate bringing down is when it's the biggest jump from heaven to earth. So that's the primary level of Elokos. And he says, Who is the one that's able to bring the Shekhinah back to earth that we have the revelation of godliness, Moshe? And then he explains in the Maimer, Ki kol ha-shvi chavivin. Okay. Yeah. The, the Maimer says, Meshe Rabbeinu brought the Shechina back down to earth. Meshe Yishu shvi was the seventh. And then in parentheses, if you need to get a right, kol ha-shvi and chavivin. Because it's, and so he's saying clearly, why did Meshe Rabbeinu bring the Shechina down? Because he was the seventh. Okay. And the reason. Yeah, let's see what he says now. Vine in Gimel. The Ma'am Milosh and Azal. Chazal say like this. Chol Ashvi in Chavivin. It says, all seven are precious. It doesn't say all precious are seven. It says, all the seventh. Chol Ashvi in Chavivin. If you're the seventh, you're dearest. It doesn't say all dearest are seven. Meaning, Mochach mizeh shi'i ker amayle shehu shvi. Just because he's the seventh. In other words, what is the chayv maimer chazal? Kol ha-shvi and chavivi means just because you're the seventh, you're precious. The Medrash says it, by the way, interesting point. Seventh day is Shabbos. Seventh month is Tishrei. Seventh year is Shemitah. Seventh Shemitah is Yevil. All the sevens are precious. But it means basically that I've been saying it doesn't say all precious are seven. All seven are precious, meaning just because you're the seventh, meaning not because you're great, not because you're under you're number seven, you're special. It's not because you chose to be the seventh, or you your avoida made you the seventh. Just because you happen to be born seventh. Whatever. I'm oh, unbelievable. Because in a Kalashvim Chavivin. Okay, just because he's a seventh. Let me tell you something. The Rebbe is bringing out in this Maimer, our door is Dora Shvi. So the Rebbe says, we didn't. We didn't, it's not up to us that we're the seventh generation. It's not in our greatness that we're the seventh generation. The fact is we are the seventh generation from the Alter Rebbe, so we're special because we have to bring the Shekhinah back down to earth like Moshe Rabbeinu did. That's, even, even if you're not special, but that makes us special. The fact that you, because otherwise it would say, Kola Chavivin Shvi. If you're precious, you're the seventh. It says, no. You, because you're seven, that's what the, the expression is. Kol ha-shvin, chavivin, just because you're seventh. L'chein zoch ha-meisha shenit na teir al-yodi. If a meisha rabbeinu merited, that teir should be given through him. 
Hine bir chak merchav merad mor. When the Friede Krav came to American Tovshin, he said like this: Shagam be'inyan ashvi chavivin. Even when you say the seventh is precious, but you see the greatness of the first. Why is they? Why are they seven? Because there is a first, right? That means because you're the seventh to the first. That means there's a mile in the first, and that's what makes you seventh. But you're not as great as you're greater than the first. He says, Shere call in Yinshvi, because what's the se- concept of seven? Shu Shvi Lurishin, because you're seventh to the first. Obir, as in that moment, the Friedrich Rabbi explains, my loss is Shalarishin, Shazavram Avinu. Because it, who's the first? Avram Avinu. Bipne Avidase, number one, because, like we said last week, why is Avram Avinu the first Jew? Why isn't Noach the first Jew, Mr. Shalach the first Jew? They're a bunch of nice, good guys. Because Avram Avinu came to the realization of godliness on his own. It wasn't coming, gift Mumaila, Hashem inspired them. He came at three years old, he reckoned, and Shai Savoy, the Bemesidus Nefesh. What was Avram Avinu? He recognized Hashem on his own, and he had self sacrifice he was thrown into the fire, and all the Mesidus Nefesh that Avram Avinu had. Then he missed up, but the Adayin and the Friedrich Rebbe does not suffice with this. But he explains another interesting point. Omei sevayt, and he adds in that Maimer, not in Basil Lagani, in that Maimer of Chedesh Hazalachem. After the Chedesh ends and the Gei Hashem Lagufa Inyan, he says, "What was the uniqueness about Avram Avinu's Mesidus Nefesh? The Eifin a Mesidus Nefesh Shaloi." What was his style, Mesidus Nefesh? Shalaha Yechipesh, Mesidus Nefesh. He didn't look for it. Mm-hmm. Let, let's learn a few lines and we'll explain it. It's a remarkable concept. Shazel Hefesh, Ben Mesidus Nefesh of Avram Avinu, to the Mesidus Nefesh of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva also had Mesidus Nefesh, right? But, my Mesidus Nefesh, the Rabbi Akiva, Haisav was at Gezucht Mesidus Nefesh. He looked for it, he wanted it. Like Rabbi Akiva said, <clears throat> when am I going to be able to have Mesidus Nefesh? When Rabbi Kiv was learning, when the Romans decreed the no learning, okay, they caught him, they persecuted him. So the students, Tamidim asked Rabbi Kiv, why are you having Mesidus Nefesh to learn Torah? You're going to get killed. So Rabbi Kiv said, my whole life, I was waiting for Bukhal Nafshechot. I feel even if you die. For godliness, my whole life I was saying, and he was laughing when he was being tortured. That's what, when Rabbi Kiva was being tortured, he was laughing. He was happy. So the student said to him, what do you, you know, huh? So he said, my whole life I was waiting to do Mesidus Nefesh. Now when I, that was my goal. So now when I reached my goal, I shouldn't be happy. But Rabbi Kiva looked for Mesidus Nefesh. Sounds higher than that. <laughs> It was in passing. He didn't want it. If he needed it, he did it. Okay, let's learn a few more lines. I'll explain the whole thing. Avram Avinu knew one thing. What was his primary role? Don't read it. Vayikra the Medrash says, Ela Vayakri. Not only he called, but Vayakri, he made others call. As Yenazel Eich Shrayin. That somebody else should also be screaming, Kel Eilam, And therefore, if he, listen, Abraham Vino said, I have a goal. Bring godliness into the world. If I need Mesidus Nefesh, I'll do that also. If I don't, I won't. Because my, I have a goal. Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva didn't have a goal. His goal was Mesidus Nefesh for ultimate completeness of Kedusha. Rabbi Kiva wanted to reach the ultimate level of Kedusha. Yeah? What's the ultimate level of Kedusha? Mesidus Nefesh. Avram Avinu didn't look for completeness. He didn't look for his own self, com, uh, self uh, greatness, whatever, completion. Rabbi, Rabbi, Avram Avinu said, I need to spread, spread godliness in the world. And just to analyze this Pasik, the Pasik said, Vayikra Sham, B'Shem Hashem Kel Elam. Yeah, how do you translate the Pasik? He called there in the name of Hashem, God of the world. Yeah? Lukhaira, it should have said Kel Ha'ilam. 
You don't say Melech Elam. You say Melech Ha'elam. Right? So normally, so the Medrash says, not only Vayikri, he called himself, Vayakri, he made others call. He spread the, you know, the first Chabadnik. But it doesn't say Kel Ha'elam. It says Kel Elam. Because Chassidus explains like this. Kel Ha'elam means there's a world and there's a God and God is the God of the world. So there's two separate entities. Melech Ha'elam means there is a world and Hashem is the king of the world. Kel Elam means God and world are synonymous. It's not that there's a world and God is the God of the world. World is God. World is Kel. And that was Avram Avinu's point to prove to the world, and Vayakri, he also publicized it, that people should understand there's not two separate entities. There's a world, and God is the boss of the world, but the world is Alokus. Alts is Alokus, and Alokus is Alts. That's what Avram Avinu did. Rabbi Kiva, on the other hand, looked for Mesidus Nafesh. Yeah. In other words, to, to be phrase it, the two friends that met, they grew up together and then they split past. One went into the Chassidish world, one went into the Litvish world. And they met many years later. So they're talking, you know, so the Chassid says to the Litvish guy, so what was going on in your life? He says, my whole life I was striving to become a great person in learning. And the Chassid said to him, that's funny, my whole life I was striving to be a nothing. In other words, a person who does things for their own personal shlema, halavai, we should have that issue, right? I mean, that should be our worst problem. But again, let, let's call a, a, a spade a spade, like they say. If I do things that I should be a good human being, then it's really for me. And I'm doing good for me. The end of the first prayer of Tanya, the said it. That's why he had to run away to the cave. It's only for to show off. There's many places. Somebody asked the Rebbe, "Why? Why are they? They could take a city of Masalem, but, but." The Alter Rebbe says that, or the Gemara says, not the Alter Rebbe, Rashbi said, that a, a person who's not Jewish does chesed for showing off. And the Rebbe, they asked the Rebbe, I mean, what, like why? So the Rebbe said, the Rebbe explained, most people, most people, very good people, why do they do chesed, or goodness and kindness? Because I want to be a good person, in order to be a good person, you have to be kind. You have to be good. You have to do chesed. What happens, though, if by doing chesed you're going to get hurt by it? Then you won't necessarily do it. Because then it's incompleting you. You're going to be losing something by it. So you won't necessarily... Necess- you find going to do it. Then they're called chesed yom but the Rebbe explains most people, and this is true, most people do chesed, even by uh, Eden. Why are you a nice person? Because I'm spo- a person is supposed to be nice. Therefore, I want to be a good person. So how am I a good person? By being nice. But if the going good chesed would hurt you, then you don't necessarily do it. That means you're not doing good for good. You're doing good because I need to be a good person. I need my own shlemus, my own completeness. The ultimate, that was Rabbi, listen, Rabbi Kiva's Messiah's never, which was super great. Okay? But the, the Friedrich Rebbe is explaining, compared to Avram Avinu, it's not the same level. Avram Avinu didn't look for his own completeness. Avram Avinu had a mission. Vayikr Sham publicized godliness in the world. Right? Make all the souls that uh, the gave him. Yeah? If Messiah's Nefesh was needed, I'm ready to do Mesidus Nefesh. It's not needed. I'm not going to do it. The Rebbe used to say many times when the Rebbe came out with issues. The Rebbe said, if saying it in my name would make it better, say it in my name. If making it won't make it better, don't say it in my name. As long as the thing gets done. The main thing is the thing has to get done. So he's not looking for his own completeness. He's looking for that object got to get done. 
And that was Avram Avinu's Maimer, the Friedrich Rebbe says in the Maimer. Can I say that? What? How was Avram Avinu with Tara having a Rebbe, with Tara having a... That's why, that's what made him the first Jew. No, but he had such a depth of understanding of Hashem, because it is not just... He was able to, to what was his name before he was changed? Avram, right? What's Avram? Av Ram. Which Chassidus explains, Av is Chachma. Rav is a level higher than removed, right? Avram Avinu was a level of Chachma Stima. The highest level of Chachma of Keser. Yeah, he was Chesed also. But Avram Avinu was, so he had this tremendously great level of an understanding, comprehension of what God is all about. That's what made him the first Jew. But that was a God-given gift. Yeah, but he utilized it. You know, if somebody could be given a brilliant head and they don't use it, it's not a blessing. Right? If you use it, yeah, you realize Hashem gave it to me to Koyach, but I have to work on it. Right? Okay. The Kokah God la Mailas Avedos Eva Mesidus Nafish. Not only that, Avram Avinu was so great with his Mesidus Nafish. Ada Hashem Gam Moshe, that even Moshe Rabbeinu, who got the Torah, who is the Shvi that brought the Shechina back down to earth? Yeah? Or Emitam Ki Ashvi Chavivin, because he's the seventh Avram Avinu, so how, that's how great he was. Hakadi Baruch Amal El Moshe B'Makom Gedel and Al Tamid. Don't stand in the place of the greatness of Avram Avinu. You know, Meshav Avinu complained, Hashem, Lama Yerosel, Mazer, why are you making so life so difficult? Hashem said to him, B'mokum G'daylam al Tamid. You have no, you can't even stand in the place of Avram Avinu. That means, Meshav Avinu, who was the seventh, and brought the Shekhinah back down and all that stuff, is told by Hashem, Avram Avinu is greater than you. So even though seven is better than the first, but that's because he's the seventh of the first. And he says, the greatness of the seventh ain't the fact that you're the seventh, right, like you, the seventh kid, is not because you did something about it or you had free choice to be the seventh kid. You didn't put it in an order. Your neshama didn't put it in order to be number seven. Kiem fartikid hate is just done. Mitzada told it because of his birth. Mikama came aim bazahag bala. Shenama nefloi so it's not limited that you can say it's wondrous. Vein a shaykh al lichidis school to say that this level is only unique level for great tzaddikim. If you're seven, you didn't do anything to become seven. It wasn't your choice. And sometimes, like the Rebbe writes at the other way, you can even not want to be the seventh. No, because then you get all the hand-me-downs from sixth generation. Ki yam al-derech shumuvu tonir ve'elio. Like it says in tonir ve'elio, muvu bedach shekol Yisrael. That every single Jew, even ever a shivk, even a slave or a maid servant, can get as ruach ha-kedosh. Everybody can get it. V'chol echad v'echad mi Yisrael. Chayiv leim is obligated to say, when will my actions reach the level of Avram Yitzchuk and Yaakov? By the way, it doesn't say when will I my neshama reach. When will my actions reach? The same film we put on Meshur Avinu did, right? I mean, same thing. We shouldn't fool ourselves. That means even though you're the seventh and you're super great and so that he said, don't fool yourself. And you need to know that the first is greater than you. And the whole advantage of seven is you're the seventh of the first. Therefore, as a can do for an avayd of a shlich a sarishin. That the seventh, in other words, what did the seventh do? Seventh c- completed what Avram Avinu began coming back, to bringing the Shekhinah back down, right? So Avram Avinu began the process, and the seventh completes it. But who began the process? The first. 
And therefore, the seventh has the obligation to complete the Aveda. I'll take the Vayikra, the Vayakri, the Vayakri, the Zelach, the Shvi. This is the uniqueness of the seventh. Shuamam Shishchina brings down the Shechina. And not only that, it brings down Ike Shechina, the highest level of the Shechina. And not only that, where does it bring it? Betachtainim to the lowest of worlds. And here the Rebbe says like this. <laughs> This was demanded from each one of us. from the the And he says, the even though this with the, with the seventh generation, It's not that we chose to be the seventh generation. It's not based on our avoided that we're the seventh generation. And the Rebbe adds. Maybe you don't even want to be in the seventh generation. He says, Me come, okay, nevertheless, tough luck. You're the seventh, whether you like it or not. We find ourselves in the heel right before the coming of Mashiach. The end, meaning the heel of the heel. What, therefore, what's our Aveda? Just like what was Meshach Rabbeinu's Aveda to complete what Avram Avinu began, our Aveda is to complete what the Alter Rebbe began. The Aveda of the Alter Rebbe revealing Chassidus into the world, so the Alter Rebbe began it. The fact that we're the seventh is, like they say, tough luck with the seventh because this is what Hashem chose. And our job is not only to bring the Shechina, ki em Shechina, to bring to the primary level of the Shekhin, and we're betachta in How many years is the generation? Yeah, that was my question. Huh? Sometimes it's 35. Huh? Used to be 10 years. No, no, no. Generation yeah. officially is 35 years. Yeah. But 35. Now, today? No, it depends what you're talking about. If you're talking about teaching first grade, second grade, it's every year is a new generation. <laughs> Every year the kids change. The Rebbe no, I'm saying so when is it, what it means when is like it's the Alter Rebbe was the first generation, and then the Mittal Rebbe, and then the Samach So it's some of the third generation, fourth generation. For sure, we over 35. The Rebbe has been Rebbe over 35 years. So for sure, we had a 40 year to see us, and it's 30, and it's 25 years past. No. So, we're so, for sure we so the generation. We're, so we're still in the Rebbe's generation. So the Rebbe's generation. Obviously. We need to finish. We need to finish the job. The Rebbe is waiting for us to finish the job. Is this the longest one ever? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Longest generation ever? Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, a double from the child. The longest ever. Okay. I have so, a question. Why don't we count on the Baal Shem Tov as seven? Because Tomach Sid is Chabad. The Baal Shem Tov, the Magid, are the two levels of Keser, Atik and Arech. And Al Rebbe is a level of Chochmah and Chesed. And the seven Rebbe, the Rebbe speaks about these things. The, because that was Chesed Sakloli, was in Chabad, which is internalized, that began from the Al Rebbe. Primius mm-hmm. began from the Al Rebbe. The Baal Shem Tev and the Magu were Makifim level. So that's not counted in the Sviris, because the Makifim Chesed is not counted in one of the ten Sviris. So they were a level of Chesed. Atik and, and Arich and uh, the Alter Rebbe began the level of Chabad so that began the level of intellect and then says the Alter Rebbe is Chochmah in the middle of Bina to Mechzedek is Teferes or Das and Teferes and then Das and Teferes the same thing so whatever it's got to be a bigger plan I mean, we're sitting here years and it's not moving. on the country there's a very big plan we don't get it we know it the Rebbe guided us exactly what we I need to do. It, but it's like the Rebbe gave us clear, to, to clear it us what to do. Take the sikhs, take the igres, it's clear everything what to do. It's spelled out. Rachel, bitcha, aktana. Everything what you need to do. That's it. Okay. Dalid. <laughs> Okay, by the way, it's interesting. When the Rebbe said, I wasn't there, obviously. But when the Rebbe said the first Mimer, he didn't say the Mimer straight through. He said a little bit, he stopped, he told him to sing a nigging, then he continued, and another nigging. It was a whole, it wasn't Stam. He said the whole Mimer one time, like later. 
What? Are we zeffer to have a miracle happen to us? You woke up this morning? I oh, no, stop. I'm serious. I'm when you stop? Serious. You woke up this morning, it's I a miracle. I'm asking that, that you made it here in one piece, it's a miracle. Okay, so? I'm asking that God, that, that God should be, be here already. Is it, uh, do we zecha that or not? Yeah, when we bring Mashiach. Who said that we, uh, hmm. Okay. Now, before Mashiach, everybody keeps screaming at him, why he didn't come yet? They should. Yeah, they should. So in this Mimer, he talks about himself? He talks about himself as the seventh generation, not because of our greatness and not because we chose to be. In other words, basically, in, in, we're stuck. <laughs> okay, we're the seventh generation. Isn't he referring to himself as the Mesh Rabbeinu? Obviously he is, but he's speaking about the seventh generation. He's saying clearly not because of our greatness, not because okay. we chose to become a Rebbe. As we know, the Rebbe didn't want to become a Rebbe. And until the Rebbe told him something, uh, basically he right. wasn't... Huh? So is the wife. No, the Rebbe told him, if you don't accept the leadership, what's going to happen to all the six generations of the, of the Rebbe Mzalveda? Is going to go to to to, to, to it's going to get lost. That was one of the final things that actually caused the Rebbe to, to decide to be Rebbe. I mean, he was a Rebbe anyway, but I'm saying to accept it. Okay, Vinei Achad Shemavayir. After he explains in the Maimon, the Iker Shchina B'Tachto in the Maimon that that Iker Shchina was down here. And then he both spoke about Meisher Rabbein. This is all the first us of the original Bas in Lagani, don't forget. This whole Maimer is on the first us of the, like we said last week. Then the Friedrich Rebbe continues after he says that, you know, the Avedis caused the Shechina to leave and then the seven myths of Meisher Rabbeinu brought the Shechina back down. Then he says, where is now the Iker Gile Elokus? Is in the Beis Migdosh. In other words, to explain it, Meshe Rabbeinu brought the Shechina back down by Matan Teira. Yeah, but it had to stay here. Right? You could bring down something if there's no vessel to keep it, it gets straight, you know, lighter. If there's no fuel, it's going to go out. So Meshe Rabbeinu brought the Shechina down by Matan Teira. And then Nebuch just says, for me to stay here, now make a Mishkan, and basically make the same thing, that I should stay here. Otherwise, Meshach Ben brings out Shechina, and, and then, Hashem needs a place to live. You know, Har Sinai, after Matan Teda, was gone, finished. Which is another interesting thing. The greatest revelation that ever existed in, in the Jewish nation was Matan Teda, and Thomas Sheikh's coming. Yet Al Trebin, when he speaks about Pakalam above, when he speaks about Mashiach, he says, Ma'ain Zah Haisa Bshas Matan Tayra. Similar to the Gila, Mashiach was by Matan Tayra. The greatest revelation the Jews had was by Matan Tayra. Yeah? Or the Mishkan. Yeah. The second the Shina went up, the Mshaikh Hayevil, as soon as the the Mashaifa stops blowing, and it Hemiyalo Bahar. Har Sinai was a mountain like any other mountain. You can walk up on it. It's not holy. The Mishkan, yeah? Traveled 38 years in the desert. The Mishkan was in this city. Yeah? The Mishkan left. You could play soccer there. I mean, it's, it was the, nothing. The Mokim Migdosh, now in Yishalayim, that the place is holy. That the place is holy. But the Mishkan in Mahar Sinai was not holy afterwards. So in order for Hashem to stay down here, the Yidin had to build a Mikdash or a Mishkan. You said the Mishkan will move and the place will not be holy. Huh? It had to be just yeah, but while the Mishkan was in the place, then it was holy. What? What does it mean like now that that place is holy? We don't go there, but is it a different kind of holiness? No, you're not allowed to walk on the higher bias. You're not allowed to... Yeah. Is it a different... Is it a lower level now because of... The, Obviously, the, when the yeah. Shekhinah was there, but it says, Shekhinah is also in The is still in, in Mokam and Mikdash. It's not revealed as much. 
Let's not get into the, the hetarim that they have. What they, cause some people say they know exactly what Mokam Amigdash is and some the places that is not necessarily Mokam Amigdash, whatever. Based on Knesses, they're holy, right? Like the, the Chabad houses, right? Are they holy? The, 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 the Everything in Chabad shul. is holy. Yeah, no, but when they the move, shul. they're not holy anymore. Sure, here, this shul. Yeah, but when they move, they're not holy But I, I, I thought I learned somewhere that the, when the base of Mikdash was destroyed, Hashem took the Afal and put it, it scattered it in all the base of Mikdash, in all the shuls and the synagogue. So that means the synagogue should be holy, even if it's moved, right? Never heard it. As long as it's a shul, it's holy. If it's not a shul anymore, what is it? It's just a plain building. But God put the put the alpha from the from the base of Mikdash in every shul. Okay, anyway, let's go back to it. So before Chet Etz Adamus, there was a designated place for the Shechina, which was Gan Eden, or not? Only after um, the Torah, we needed, we needed to build Mishkan or... Adam and before the Chet Etz Adas was in Gan Eden, and then Neshem drove him out. But Gan Eden is, yeah, Gan Eden. See, now we call it Gan Eden. But if you look in the Chumash... It says at the beginning of Chumash, "V'nohar yeitzem me'eden, lahashkis es a A river went out of Eden to water the Gan. Right? That means there was a river. I mean, a Gan, and Eden. And the river went from the me'eden to water the Gan. Right? Uchsidus explains, Eden is Idun Tainug, which is the Essence, the Yechida is the level of Tainug. Then there's a Hamshach from Tainug into the Nohar, which is a Hamshach of water coming down. Lahashke says a Gan. Gan had a 53 Parshis, Sedris in Taira. There's 53 Parshis or Sedris in Chumish, which is the level of Chachma. So there's Hamshach from the level of Eden into, into Chachma, uh, and then it became Gan Eden. Okay, but then other issues. Person, so was Gan Eden the ultimate revelation of godliness in the world at the time? Yeah, that doesn't mean it wasn't all over. But that's where there was a revelation of of Elokus until they sinned, and then they they cut it. No, it was greater. Because, you know, Hashem still runs the world. Hashem made Chatei Tzadas happen. The Medrash says Hashem made Chatei Tzadas happen, right? Now, to do a Yerida for Yerida doesn't make sense. But you don't invest $100 to make $100. It's foolish. So obviously when the Ebership planned the 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 gun the the what should we call it the the gilei alokus yeah the re, I mean why he made the chet itzadas is that afterwards the alia should be greater than before otherwise why did he make the itzadas happen so the left so this explains that the alokus that was revealed by Martin Taylor was greater than the completeness of the world when they wished to made it before chet itzadas. Why is this? It's very simple. Elam al milui nivra. Debesh created the world. Debesh created a perfect world. Obviously, if Hashem does it, He does it right the first time, right? You don't have to call him back to redo the job. Hashem did created the perfect world. So what's wrong with that? Because Hashem said, for me to make a perfect world, big deal. I want that. Yidin, or people, should make a perfect world. Now, if the world is perfect, how do you perfect perfect? How do you perfect perfect, so to speak, in correct English? So what do you have to do? You have to break the building. And then you can make it better. But if the building is perfect, so how are you going to make it no more perfect? Okay. And obviously, if Hashem does it, it's the best possible way. This is what explains that for the whole 
Aliyah, you need the I mean, you need Aliyah, Aliyah. It's all in the plan. It's all in the system. Hashem said, okay, I created a perfect world. Great. Big deal. Okay. Now I want people to make a perfect world. So Hashem said, okay, first we got to break it up. Right? You want to, even when you make things, right? You build things. You have kids who, when they make something with Legos, and then you want to make something better. So you have to break it up, and then you can rebuild it. So the Abish just said, okay, we're going to break up the world, and then the people are going to perfect it. So what happened is, <clears throat> Hashem, Adam, Adam, Hashem made Adam Chavasin, broke up the world, okay? And then it went further and further in the breaking stage, the seven heavens that the Shechina left, and then they started fixing it. Now, Meshe Rabbeinu brought it back down on earth. Paschazua Masam. In other words, <clears throat> death that was decreed at Chate Tadas was no more going to be. Because it rectified, it put the world into a pre Tadas state, before death, and even higher than before. Hashem said, okay, good. But that is the Tzadikim level. Now I want to make an even better perfect world about Shuva perfect world. Well, Shuva is, Shuva is greater than Tzadikim, right? So, Avram, Yitzchok, and Yaakov, all the seven guys basically were all Tzadikim. So that level, yes, it was done by people, <clears throat> but it was the Tzadik level of perfection. The Ebershit said, okay, beautiful, but you know what? I still want something better. What do I want? I want a Balchuva level. So what did they wish to make? He made the eagle. He made the eagle that the Eden should become Bali Tshuva. Why do we celebrate Simchas Teda after Yom Kippur, not Shavuos? Simchas Teda should be on Shavuos. We got the Teda on Shavuos, so there'll be the right time, you know, to begin the Teda and the Teda it's after Tishrei, after Yom Kippur. So this explains. Mat and Teda, the Jews left Egypt. They, were, they prepared themselves 49 days. There were newborn babies. The birth, birth of the Klau Yisrael was by Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. As Yecheskel, the rabbi called the Pazim, Yecheskel it was the, the day that Am Yisrael was born as a nation. They were all tzaddikim. Mm-hmm. Comes Mat and Teda, yeah, they're all tzaddikim. Hashem said, okay, I want Luchas Shnias. What's the difference between Luchas Rishenis, the first Luchas and Luchas Shnias? The first Luchas were given the Yidman level of Tadik. Second Luchas, Hashem said, Yim Kippur, Salach, Tikit, Varachat, they became Bali Tshuva. The nation was Bali Tshuva. Hashem said, where's the real Simcha? Not the Tzadik Matan Teira, the Bal Tshuva Matan Teira. It's all part of the process. So, is there still free choice if Hashem wanted something to break? Yeah. It's hard to understand that, right? No. Very easy. If Hashem wants the world to kind of fall so they can be Belchuk, <clears throat> so is there a choice for the world to not fall? If Hashem wants, that's part of His plan. So how could we not fall into the plan of Hashem? It's kind of very hard to... I don't want to get personal to anybody, but... Just answer yes, because that's what you're supposed to say. Did you ever sin? You did. Now, I mean, nothing personal. Okay, you like everybody else. Not a secret. Not a secret, okay. (laughs) The only question is how much. That's the the secret. Okay. Somebody sinned. Somebody sins. Yes? Now, did Hashem want that person to sin or not? One minute. Did Hashem want the person to no, sin? No. Hashem didn't want the person to sin. He didn't want to, but he allowed Hashem him tells him not to sin in the Torah, so Hashem doesn't want them to sin. No. The answer is, before they sinned, the answer is no, Hashem does not want them to sin. After they sinned. After the fact. Correct? Did Hashem want that they should sin? Yeah, because if not, he wouldn't have allowed them to. They eat trade, right? See, your mouth has to chew. Who gives you the ability to chew? <coughs> if Hashem doesn't want you to sin, you should freeze your mouth. Hashem gives me the choice to do it. That's a different thing of wanting me to do it. Before we sin, Hashem doesn't want us to sin. That's clear, right? He said, don't sin. Right. 
But after the fact of sinning, if he didn't want it, it wouldn't have happened. If he didn't want us to sin, he would have frozen us, stuck our, our mouth that we can't chew. You could have got people become paralyzed. Become paralyzed. Right? Why did he allow us to eat it? Because after the fact, Hashem says, now you could become a Balchuva, which would be greater even than not eating it beforehand. Before, now that's not for us. But before and after is for human beings. For right, exactly. me, there is before I did right. and after I did. But, but for the Hamish he doesn't he's not time. limited by time. <laughs> Exactly, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 uh, I'm the, we're done.